I want to start with there's so many big moments in this movie, but you have one of the biggest moments, in my opinion. When you walk out onto the track and announce to the ether, tell me, tell me about that, that scene. Um, honestly, one day, <laughs> that wasn't supposed to be like it was. Randall just said, we're going to do something different. How about you just run onto the track and, and just scream, blah, 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 blah. That scene was complete. That scene was not even in the movie. Um, Randall just said, this is what we're going to do. And it was, it felt good. <laughs> Talk to me about Eddie. He's no longer with us, and uh, you mentioned to me that, that you wish he was. Why do you say that? What do, what do you think, or what would you like to see through him if Ed, Eddie was here to see all of this? I think that the, rec <clears throat> the recognition and some of the glory from what Secretary did would have made its way to him had he been still alive. But, uh, you know, he died. And, you know, it, it was it was just sad reading about how he died. Um, he died penniless. Um, sad. He was an alcoholic. Uh, so I, I, I would have liked him to have gotten some of the recognition for the work that he put in with the horse, with Secretariat. Um, so yeah, yeah. You know, Randall, I'm sure, is, it's a chore to take a movie where everybody knows how it comes out, yeah, but sure. still make it, you know, that exciting and still have you on the edge of the seat. Mm -hmm. Is it, a, is that also a challenge for you as an actor when you, when you absolutely know what the end is, is, is going to be and, and you're playing something real like that? No. No, I would have thought it was the contrary. I, I would have thought it's a benefit. Uh, because then you can really play against what the end result will be and therefore help give it an element of, of surprise and of tension. Um, and you know, I, actually people don't know Secretary. You know, the audience that will see this, I, I would have thought the vast majority won't know who Secretary it was. Um, well, vast majority, okay. The, it, I mean, obviously, they'll look at it and go, is Secretariat, who is that? Is that a guy? Is it the jockey? Is it a horse? What happened? No, I think they won't know the story. Well, people who are not pushing 50 or above, probably they weren't around when the story happened. When That's the story right. happened. That's right. I hate to say that on my part. 1973 <laughs> is a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, Maybe there'll be some awareness through YouTube and, and things like that because that's actually something you can watch. And, but I imagine that will happen after they see the film. Of course, Secretariat still has uh, fans across the planet, uh, but I, I wouldn't have thought that, say, the majority of... of of our audience here in America, under you know thirty or younger, why should they know? You know, I, I was just curious. I was wondering if every day when you made your trip to the uh, to the wardrobe trailer, if that was uh, if that was like a uh, did, <laughs> had I eaten breakfast and did I throw up? Before? Um, well, you know that's the ugliest year in fashion history. I mean. F f millennium, um, it's just the most astonishing, like, ugly, uh, highly colored and, and sort of brutally colored clothes ever. And in fact, when, if you YouTube those races, the, the real ones are much worse. Um, they're really kind of blinding. Yeah. Lapels. The lapels, the polyester, the colors. Of, absolutely all, nothing you'd ever find in nature. Um, just really, really an ugly, a very, very abject time in fashion. So I said, Randall, look, you get me in this movie, I'll get you an entourage. So he did four episodes of Entourage, I did the movie. So it was a lot of fun. <laughs> it'll, it'll give a take. Yeah, right. But talk to me about Randall achieving what he did achieve with 
the, I don't know if it's ever been quite done like that with the horse. I agree. I, I've never, uh, you know, the, you know, I really loved Sea Biscuit. Um, it was a great movie, but I thought from the actual racing aspect of it, I thought that the way him and Dean Semler shot the actual racing stuff was the best ever that's been done on, on horses. Just the way you just felt like you were there and there, you know, they just had different perspective than, I, than I'd seen, you know, whatever, you know, and they really managed to feel like, you know, there's that thing where the horses are kind of having to stare down, you know, where if you read that, it might seem weird, but when, you, when, you, when you're watching it, you really felt like these horses, you know, they do say that too about these horses, like they want to win those races. They're, they're instinctual, they're competitive, they run, they want to run, they want to, they want to win that race, you know, so I think to see just like that, that animal instinct of, you know, horses that just like staring each other down, you know, knowing who, you know, who beat, you know, I, I love that aspect, it just made me smile watching Secretariat and Sham in a stare down. You know, I, I, I think I can remember watching all of these triple count races on TV in the days before cable. I think it was on ABC oh, Wild yeah. World of Sports, I think. Was that, you know, I don't want to date you, is that before your time? No, I was born later on. Okay. I was born a year later. So, so I was born in 74. But I remember ABC Wide, you know, Wide World of Sports, you know, which was the big thing, which, of course, you'd see these guys racing. It was funny, my father, my dad always used to say, you know, like on those, in those days, you come home on like a Tuesday night and Wide World of Sports and like Ali was fighting for the title, like, you know, on on ABC, you know what I mean? As opposed to now where it's like 70 bucks and you know, it fights on 11 o'clock, you know? So it was, uh, yeah, I remember the Wide World of Sports. I remember it, I was very young, but the, the song, the theme song and, you know, Cosell and all, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, and I know also we grew up not too far from Belmont, so. That was where we would, you know, go for picnics, and all my cousins. We would all gather, gather at the track. All of our, all of our fathers and uncles are very much into it. Of course, none of them could pick a winner to save their lives, but, but who can? Kevin, was he kidding when you said there was like a little tit for tat going on here? He was going to get you hooked up with Entourage as long as you got him hooked up in the film. <laughs> is he, is he, yeah, he there was no quid pro quo, no, no. as they say, <laughs> but it was really amazing to, to come out of that. Actually. Um, my casting director for our Secretariat, uh, Sheila Jaffe, who just did a magnificent job and got the greatest cast. And Sheila also casts Entourage. And, and uh, I know Frank Darabont, and he's been on the show, and I kept saying, what did Frank Darabont ever do for you? Did, did, did you cast his movies? And, and then uh, and when we had just finished shooting, she called me up and said, did you really mean you wanted to be on the show? And I said, I'd love to. I'd love the show. And she said, well, I have an arc for you. Let's talk about making a movie where people our age, we absolutely know the end. Yeah. But as John pointed out, and because I am my age, I didn't really think about, there's a huge segment of the population that probably doesn't really know that much about Secretariat. Right. So how do you approach that as a director when, yeah, when you're, you're, you're telling that story, but you've got that dichotomy going on? As a director, what I want to do is, is try to get beyond that into a different place in everyone. I want to get the audience to be experiencing this story. When I was a kid uh, back in, in the South, I would go to the movies and certain movies, not every one certainly, but, but some of them, I would walk out and say, that experience was so powerful, my life is going to be different. I'm not, never going to see life quite the same way. And that's the kind of movie that I want to make. I mean, Braveheart, We Were Soldiers, they're, they're primary experiences of, of being in a place. And that's where I wanted to take the audience, make the, the, the races so personal uh, so that the sound and the visuals you know, rivet you right there. That's why I think audiences are cheering at races. They might even know what happened, but they're out there screaming, go, go. You know, we, we've seen some pretty high-profile films that are based on horse racing in recent years. Um, I, I'm not asking you, hopefully, to be immodest, but do you think you achieved some things on the track in this one that haven't been done before? Well, I have no doubt about the fact that we've done this in a way no one else has ever done it. Um, and, you know, and the, and the funny thing is, I thought some of those movies were magnificent. I. I, I used my votes to nominate some of them for Oscars. Um, but, 
you know, you look at them and, and what they achieved and, and they, they help you raise the bar to what you want to do to, to make something really different. And when we, we shot our racing footage, we were innovating camera technologies and filming techniques that, that no one ever used before. Now, I talk to actors all the time when they play real people, and those people are there. Mm -hmm. What was that like for you? Was that a plus, or was that maybe... I, I've never really heard of that happening. I mean, to me, it's an extra layer of surrealism that one can't rehearse in your imagination what that's like. Um, it feels like more of a democracy <laughs> because there's just one more person there that is a specialist at the truth and you want them to be really happy with how they're portrayed. Um, and, and everybody is a specialist because it's history we're talking about here and uh, everybody wants to be included by knowing something about it. So that's fine and well and good, you know. Did you actually have moments where Penny is saying, you know, well, it happened like this, or it happened like that. Well, that's the fear. I've, I've, I've worked before uh, on films playing, uh, in, in Perfect Storm, I play the woman who was one of the few surviving people in the book because she wasn't on the boat, but um, she was the girlfriend of one of the guys. And um, it was her testimony that helped form Sebastian Unger's book a lot. And I, I wished I'd spent time with her, but I chickened out because I was afraid that she was do exactly what you said. Tell me things I couldn't use. Fill my head with dreams that I can't fulfill because it's not in the screenplay. Penny vetted the screenplay. She read it, she knows that we have 100 minutes of screen time. We're not going to include Reva Ridge in, <laughs> in our movie. The fact that she won the Derby the year before with another horse. Um, that, that didn't protect her from uh, the danger of losing her family business. Uh, potentially if this didn't go well. You know, we've, we focus so much on, on the sporting event and the horse and all of that. Talk to me about <clears throat> that family dynamic mm -hmm. because it's interesting to watch in the film. Were you playing it from a perspective that this family might actually break up? That <clears throat> a divorce was maybe a possibility? Mm. I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> Sorry, because I have too much information. I know what happened. So I played the screenplay. 